How do you wire a float switch? How does it work? And why do you need it? This goes in the primary pan. This goes in the secondary pan. So if we were to install the secondary pan float switch, it would go right here like this. Water rises in the pan. This float rises. When it does, it opens the circuit. This float switch would go right here in the primary pan. If the water in the pan rises and the drain stopped up, this float would activate and then it would break this circuit. Let me show you how to wire it to a gas furnace and a heat pump. This float switch has three wires. Two of the wires are a normally open set of contacts for say an alarm. Two of the wires are a normally closed set of contacts and that's what I like to use. So I take the normally closed set of contacts I wire one side of the float switch to the secondary side of the transformer, the hot, not the common, and I break it. And then the other side, I go to my red thermostat wires that go to the R for the thermostat. So when the float rises and the circuit opens, then my thermostat goes blank. So we know there's an issue with the drain. I'm gonna show you what happens when the circuit opens. So right now the circuit's closed. Now it's open. Now, let's do it with it connected to the system. You can see the unit is on. Let's go check the thermostat. Thermostat's lit up. Now let's go activate the switch. Now let's activate the switch. And I'll just set it right here. Thermostat's blank. How do you wire a float switch to a gas furnace? This gas furnace doesn't have a secondary pan. So if you don't have a secondary pan, you don't use this float switch. You would use this float switch right here in the primary pan of the coil, or you would use an inline switch that would go right here in the drain line. Let me show you how to wire it. Find the terminal labeled R on the board at the furnace. Take the wire off. One side of the switch goes to the red wire that goes to the R at the thermostat. The other side of the switch gets wired into that terminal labeled R. That breaks the power to the thermostat. A float switch is needed because you can avoid water damage in a home. If you have a float switch, the float switch opens up the circuit, thermostat turns off before the water issue becomes a bigger issue and ruins a customer's home. So make sure you know how to wire one. If you like the video, hit the like button, subscribe, and smash that bell, ding, so you know what I'm doing. You want more videos like this? Go check out my playlist, HVAC Tips for Technicians. You've been watching Taddy Digest. I'm Tad. This was HVAC Tips for Technicians, and I'll keep you cool if you let me.